Welcome aboard Maya, our 37 foot floating home. I'm Jenny and together with my husband Mac, we've lived aboard our boat for the last five years. Also living aboard this entire time is our dog Disco. She's done all 8,000 miles, all the way up from Alaska down to Mexico. Not wanting to leave her behind, we figured out a way to make it work. I'm gonna share with you our experience of what we've learned and also what we do differently in the future. First, a little bit about Disco. She's a rescue from Central Washington. We got her when she was about one year old and when we moved aboard, she was about four years old. Prior to moving aboard, we had a little under an acre of land that she was able to roam around as she pleased. And then moving aboard to a boat that's a little under 300 square feet, it took some getting used to and we had to adjust our routine a little bit. Yes, we usually go to shore twice a day. Um, most places that we cruise, Washington, Alaska, BC, uh, Mexico, we're able to get off the boat twice a day in the dinghy or the sup. She gets tons of time playing fetch, going on hikes and exploring. It's more on the rare side that we aren't able to get to shore twice a day. On these occasions, it's if we're on a multiple day passage or if there are bears in plain sight on shore in Alaska, or if it's a protected island where dogs aren't allowed. Most of the time while we're sailing, it's pretty mellow and she hangs out with us in the cockpit, usually in her favorite spot underneath the Dodger. When seas are really mellow, we'll find her in the sun and on the side decks. If the sailing conditions get a little spicy, we have her go downstairs and hang out below deck until things calm down. If we're on a multi-day passage, we'll usually find her below deck uh, napping with whoever's resting down below in the lee cloth. Canada requires updated rabies vaccinations, and Mexico also cites this in their regulations, although we didn't end up showing them to anybody when we checked into the country on two different occasions, one by land and one by sea. It's a good idea to have that paperwork with you just in case something that's not a regulation but that we found out is very prevalent in Mexico is fleas and ticks. I would definitely recommend having some kind of flea and tick medication on board. We took Disco to a vet before the trip to have her vaccinated for whatever is recommended for the countries we're planning to travel to. There are times in Mexico where there are dogs roaming around the beaches that aren't on leashes and there are no owners around. 90% of the time was fine and the dogs are very chill. However, there was one time where we were going for a run along a beach and a pack of dogs ran up barking. Luckily, the owner came running out of the house with a big stick and by that time the dogs had all dispersed and nothing major had happened. It is something to think about and sometimes we'll go to shore without the dog to check it out first. Luckily, even though she's 10, she gets up and down the companionway steps with no problem. She also can get in and out of the dinghy with ease. She's about 40 pounds, so we can lift her with her life jacket on if we need to. So she prefers up near the bow or on the side decks, and we use the saltwater spray down that we have up on the bow to wash those down. If we're sailing and conditions are too rough, we'll have her use the back deck here at the stern. And we'll just use buckets of water to wash it off. It wasn't until we did multiple day trips that Disco really learned to use the boat as a restroom. In preparation for this, we tried to get her to go to the bathroom on a piece of AstroTurf. That failed, and it wasn't until we tied a piece of AstroTurf to a stop sign that she frequents, as well as many other dogs, that she recognized this is the place to go potty. Speaking of, that is the word we use every time we're on a walk or something similar, saying, go potty. Then, when we're on the boat and we can tell she's getting a little antsy or trying to tell us it's time to go, um, we'll take her up to the bow with the AstroTurf and say those words, go potty. This took many times going up and down and Disco looking at me like I was crazy. Finally, after a long waiting game, I think it took maybe 16 to 18 hours, she finally used the AstroTurf. And of course, there was tons of praise and treats, and she still gets treats to this day anytime she uses the boat restroom. Now, teaching her to drop the bricks into the water from the bow is maybe what makes Disco extra special. I really don't know how you teach a dog to do that. We usually carry bags of regular dog food in the Lazarettes. The kind of dog food just varies by the country and the availability. She also gets her diet supplemented with fresh fish we catch and being cleanup crew with the dishes. We also have a water dish that we really like that doesn't spill hardly at all while we're sailing. 
overall, she just really enjoys being wherever we are. When she gets a good fetch session in in the morning, she usually sleeps all day and likes to hang out in the sun. She also really enjoys when there's wildlife around, such as dolphins or whales, or for fishing. She's a big fan of the fishing. We've had a couple of instances where we needed to leave Disco in a different country or a different state while we travel somewhere else. One time in California, we used Rover, which is a great app to find a local dog sitter. In La Paz, Mexico, we found a dog sitting place just by Googling and she did great there as well. We've never flown with Disco, choosing to drive a van back and forth to Mexico as we usually need the extra space for boat parts and such. She's too large to fly in coach and she'd have to go in cargo. And with having the van, we just haven't had to do that. Okay, so some of the things we've learned is that having a good working outboard motor is really helpful for dog missions to shore. We have a Portland Pudgy, which has been great for pulling up over rocks and other less desirable beach landing conditions. Unfortunately, our small 2.3 horsepower outboard quit on us, so we've been rowing and we've really missed having at least a small outboard for shore missions. Another consideration is if you have a large dog or one that has trouble jumping from the dinghy onto the boat, a walk through transom can make life much easier. We don't have that, but we've gotten along just fine since Disco can make those jumps with no problem. We're glad Disco doesn't really like to get in the water much, but when she does cool off in the water, and being in Mexico has been really helpful for drying her out quickly in the sun before letting her go below deck. Other things that have been really helpful have been using a Dremel on board to keep her nails short since she likes to scratch the cushions, unfortunately. Also this brush works really well so that we have less fur down below. So this vacuum has been great for a quick sweep daily. We hope this video has helped you see what life is like for us having a dog aboard. We are by no means experts or certified in dog training or anything like that. This is just how we've all learned to coexist on this tiny floating home together. And yes, it is a commitment to having a dog aboard and some extra work, but for us, we wouldn't have it any other way. We're always glad that it gets us off the boat exploring, more exercise, and she's definitely a great morale booster to have aboard. And she's family. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you here next time. Cheers. made a way we figured out a made a way to make it. <laughs> behind we figured out a made a way we figured out a way a way to make it work that's a wrap that's a wrap yay we did it high five <laughs>